let me give you very important concept about this fundamental equation for XPS. In XPS spectrum, there are two peaks, one from photoelectrons, another from OJ electron. But this equation only talk about the photoelectrons. Then why there is a peak from OJ electron in XPS spectrum? In this fundamental equation for XPS, this kinetic energy is talk about the photoelectrons, not OJ electrons. Look the XPS spectra for fluorine. So there is a peak from photoelectrons. There is a peak from OJ electrons. Similarly, the XPS spectra for oxygen. So there is a peak from photoelectrons. There is a peak from OJ electrons. Let me discuss you very important concept behind this fundamental equation for XPS. In XPS spectrum, we know that these high intense peaks are from photoelectrons. This peak is also from photoelectrons. There is also a peak from OJ electrons and it appears like this here. But if you look into this equations, this equation only talk about the photoelectrons, not about the OJ electrons, then why there is a peak in XPS spectra for OJ electron? Let's discuss it. In X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, we simply bombard X-ray of known energy. So this means that in this equation, this energy is known here. For the information, we, we use two types of X-ray source. One is aluminum K alpha line and its energy is equal to 14 86.6 electron volt and another source we use magnesium K alpha line and its energy is equal to 6 electron volt. So this means that the X-ray energy is not here. This X-ray energy completely transferred to the core electron and the core electron eject or escape from the sample. In these electron we call photoelectrons. We are only interested to know the kinetic energy of these photoelectrons. And the XPS detector will analyze and detect these energy. And when we rearrange these equations, so we can easily calculate binding energy. How? We know this X-ray energy here. This kinetic energy we get from XPS spectrometer. And this is the work function for spectrometer and it is a constant value. In most of the cases, it is equivalent to 4.6 electron volt, right? So we can simply calculate the binding energy. Now, the important question is, this OJ process is basically not taking part in this uh, photoelectron emission. How? Once we have this vacancy in this core shell here, so there is also X-ray fluorescence uh, uh, probability this simply means that when when the higher electron the higher orbital electron fall to fill the vacancy so there is a radiation uh, here uh, uh, due to that change in energy and that radiation is in the form of x-ray but in this energy range we do not consider this phenomena in xps the second important thing is uh, XPS detect electrons, not X-ray here. So it, it, it has no importance here. Now let's come to OJ electron. Now this shell has to fill here because the atom is in ionized state. So the, this electron or this electron or maybe this electron can uh, fall to fill uh, this vacancy. So maybe there is a probability to uh, emit uh, these electromagnetic radiations, but this phenomena happen here. There is another phenomena to conserve energy. So once once this electron filled uh, this vacancy, another electron emit from that orbital, and that is we call OJ electron here. So this OJ electron is independent on these uh, type source energies because this OJ says, "Sorry, I don't care about the the X-ray source. I just." I, I just uh, need vacancy here. If there is a vacancy in the vacancy produced by this AL a source, aluminum source, or magnesium source, or some other source. So the, the, the OJ electron will emit once there is a vacancy here. 
and the XPS basically detect electrons and these electrons have certain energies this is why the peaks appear here. Let's discuss this fundamental equation behind XPS in detail here. We know that this, this is basically photon energy, X-ray photon energy which is a known we do. As I mentioned that in XPS we use two types of sources, one is from aluminium here so it has this energy and one's from magnesium and this has this energy. And I, I will also tell in the next video that why we use these two types of energy. Let me explain that because in most of the elements have the binding energy in this range, 1000 electron volt, the binding energy. So we need at least this much X-ray energy or uh, more than this. So this is why we use these two type of uh, sources, right? So this is known video here. Uh, this binding energy is the binding energy of electrons. Uh, so it is an unknown value and we have to calculate it, right? We have to calculate it. Uh, this kinetic energy of photoelectrons, not OJ electrons. This is this is, this is what I explained. These are photoelectrons and this, this, this kinetic energy uh, has to measure by the XPS spectrometers. And this is basically the work function for a spectrometer. Uh, this means that uh, the, this... Uh, 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 this is a constant value here. Uh, uh, in, in most of the cases, it has this value. And this is basically uh, an additional energy required uh, to uh, to uh, take the electrons from the spectrometer uh, surface here, right? So this is a constant value here. So uh, all these three values are constant. This is constant here. This is constant here. This kinetic energy we get from XPS spectrometer. So we can easily calculate the binding energy. As we can see, this is the standard XPS spectrum for oxygen and here we can see that this intense peak from the photoelectrons and there is also peak from uh, OJ electron this KLL this means that uh, K mean the first frequency produced in the KL K shell here uh, that frequency was filled from L shell electron and another electron emitted from uh, L shell this is why we call uh, KLL, the OG electron represented by KLL and sometimes this, this will also represented by KVV because the initial vacancy created in K shell and there is a uh, the electron fill from uh, that vacancy from the same shell and the OJ electron emit from the same shell so this is we call double uh, vacancy here right look here this is the standard XPS spectrum for fluorine in this high intense peak from photoelectrons and there is also a peak from OJ electrons. So this means that in XPS spectra there are two common peaks one from photoelectrons the another is from OJ electrons. 